Okay, you guys, welcome to episode number 12 of my whiteboard show. Uh, I'm calling it Potluck. And I actually, of all the stuff that I've done so far in, in the whiteboard show, I feel like there are two ideas that I've got that I want to create a spin-off series. Uh, first one would be radish racing, where I take those radishes, put them on the electric football field, and just do races all night long. It'd be great. And this one, which you don't even know about yet because I haven't done an episode on it yet. But I already feel like it's going to be a spin-off series. Anyway, um, before we get to what my idea is, we'll get to that in the next segment. Um, I just wanted to give you an origin of the word potluck. It actually dates back to 1592. <laughs> and it was a writer, uh, British writer, Thomas Nash, in his play, Summer's Last Will and Testament. And if you will indulge me, because you are my countrymen and so forth and a good fellow, it's a good fellow that we have never a penny in his purse. We had but even potluck, a little to moisten our lips and no more. So that's kind of the original use of it and basically luck of the draw you know it is kind of what it what it what it means um and then the general definitions now we think of it potluck is kind of has several different meanings there's that luck of the draw kind of hope for the best which really harkens back to the original meaning um but also you can just think of it as a meal without special prep or cost you can think of it as like a potluck supper and uh, for large groups where everybody's contributing something. Um, and then, or just in a general sense of whatever is available or comes one's way. Okay, so that's kind of the word itself. But my idea is that potluck is, it's basically a kitchen show, a kitchen and TV room show where you get one person, possibly two, or you just get them totally baked out of their gourds and you give them pot to do that. So these guys would be, I mean, these guys would be high. I mean, just totally, totally baked out of their gourds. If you did it with one person, it would be interesting because you ideally you'd want someone who's a self-talker, like a dude like me, that's just yapping all the time. Um, Cause you get some interesting dialogue when it's just one person talking to themselves. Um, but if you got a quiet person <laughs> and didn't, didn't talk to themselves, that'd be cool too. Cause you could see what they would do within this, within this construct. So you get either one person or two people high, and then you set them loose. Cause at some point, they're going to get, you know, the hungries and they're going to just want to eat something, but they're in kind of a confined environment. And so you then set them loose on a kitchen, uh, in a pantry that is filled with perfectly edible food, nothing poisonous, no puffer fish, no toadstools, nothing that would kill them or that person. Um, and you s just see what they would come up with. Um, so I just, and this is part of the demo of, of what the show could be in a, in a perfect world, it would take place in an actual kitchen and a real house and whatever. So here is one idea that somebody, one, if one were completely baked out of their court, so they were, you know, set loose on a kitchen that was, you know, interestingly stocked, what would they come up with? All right. So here's one potential meal or snack. It is what I am calling the, well, we could either make open face or it's gonna have a little bit of tuna on it. Lemon pepper tuna in a container that was already opened in half, you know, pretty much emptied. <laughs> so you're kind of, it's potluck, is this good? <laughs> They've already assured us that it's not, you know, anything that's going to kill us there's no this is not puffer fish <laughs> now that would be an interesting show you get like one episode 
And then, huh, I'm calling this tuna kraut. So we then put on some nice sauerkraut. And once upon a time, guys, and I swear this is true, there was a culture, there was a shaman who would read the future of his tribe. And he would consult the sacred sauerkraut. And he would read it. You have to sense it in all five ways, right? So you have to see it. You have to see it to believe it, right? And then you have to listen to it. I understand. I understand. Listen to it. Touch it. And then from there, he'd spit out some bit of advice. <laughs> Keep his job. Oh, the sandwich. I guess the sandwich, the tuna kraut. All right, guys, back to the. Sh this is what it would. This is what it would be. If maybe I'll have to be like the permanent contestant. All right. So then we also on that sandwich this tuna kraut bamboo shoot <laughs> uh, tuna kraut <laughs> bamboo shoot <laughs> tuna kraut bamboo shoot sandwich with with a condensed milk glaze. Um, with a condensed milk glaze. And I'm telling you, I've not tried this guys, but I can guarantee you. Okay. Now, also, some people will add mayo chup. That is, you know, optional. Optional mayo chup. Optional MSG. Optional. These are kind of add-ons. <laughs> if you want to get <laughs> mayo chup. <laughs> Or mayo chub. Or I think it's just yeah, one P. <laughs> and uh, an MSG. These are add-ons, optional add-ons to the sandwich. Toasted, you know, um, sure we can warm it up in a microwave, but no, you do not toast the tuna kraut bamboo shoot sandwich with a condensed milk glaze. That glaze needs something to seep into. All right, so. Here's the glaze, and guys, look at this. Condensed milk. And leche, leche condensada, endulzada. Oh. Leche condensada, endulzada. All right, we crack this thing open. And I'm telling you guys, this is this is the real deal, okay? Stuff is really sweet. Don't add a lot. And you, can you add it on the outside of the sandwich? Yes. No one said you can't. But the true version, the coolie version of this, 
just drizzle on that glaze. And your sandwich is almost ready. I, you know what? Why not? When in Rome. When in Rome, do what the mayo chop do. And let's just kind of get some of that on there. Look at that. And it's simply the combination of the tuna and the MSG is just too much to avoid. Look at that. Monosodium glutamate. Anyway, let's take a bite and <laughs> it's good <laughs> for real. I mean, it's basically got everything you'd want in a sandwich. All right. The second dish is Sadly, I'm going to have to erase that, but we got it on TV. The second dish, you guys can vote your, for your favorite one. And, and I will send recipes too, if you are interested. Um, for real. The second one is a taco. And I, I did not know this, and I'm sure a lot of you guys did. But now they make these things flavored, the shells themselves. They've probably been doing it for years. I just I just found that out for real uh, when I was getting ready for this uh, this episode. And, and I there was came ten in a pack. I ate eight of them last night. I knew I had to leave at least one for tonight for the taping, but I left two. Show a little restraint. These things are amazing and slightly probably healthier I, you know, than. Uh, Tostadas or whatever, which are really good, the hint of lime ones. And then whoever used this, I mean, come on, you know, actually I could use that for the radish race. Hang on. <laughs> radish, radish race. Radish. Here come the radishes, here come the radishes, here come the radishes. Oh. All right, here come the radishes. Here they come. All right, here, no, no, peekaboo, peekaboo, peekaboo. <laughs> don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy, they wanna know you, peekaboo, peekaboo. <laughs> all, right, all right, something like that, all right. All right, anyway. All right, what this is, folks, is going to be a water chestnut taco. And, We'll start off with that, you know, that key lime, um, hint of lime shell. You can use any other flavors. You can just use plain, totally optional. Uh, water chestnuts form the basis of this delicacy. All right. And you knew, of course, the obligatory eyeball thing. I just don't want to put my real eye out putting on a fake eye. I mean, unless this would be my replacement eye. That would be the condition. All right. Maybe by snapping it, that's how you have to snap your eyes. Hey, snap eyes. Hey, snap eyes. Oh, God. I got to work with these again. That we say in show business, though, never work with, what was it, kids, uh, dogs, or, an, you know, kids, animals, or water chestnuts. You're going to get upstaged. We're not done yet. Oh, for my youth. One of the first things I probably ever learned to cook with. You know, just slap some of this contadina tomato paste on a piece of bread, throw on a piece of bologna, fry it up in a pan. Hey, just as easily it was pot luck, it can be pot unluck or pan luck. And so pan luck for me, I make a little heated sandwich or whatever. So contadina will be a very important ingredient in this dish. And uh, all right, here's the spoon. All right, you can eat this up if you want. At any point, you know, you know, 
those uh, tools would be available for sure. It's not a requirement. Some people like it a, a, like a cold uh, water chestnut taco is, is the traditional way to serve it. Um, so this is a water chestnut <laughs> A water chestnut taco. <laughs> a water chestnut taco. With tomato paste. <laughs> With tomato paste. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> With tomato paste. And, and, I forgot about this pimento spread. <laughs> I hadn't thought about this thing for years. Pimento spread. right on top of the tomato paste. Are you getting this, Charlie? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you tasting what I'm tasting? Are you touching? No, don't touch, don't touch, no, don't touch. <laughs> Not yet, no, no, no. <laughs> Not done yet. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pimento spread. Pimento spread. No, we're not going there. <laughs> I mean, we're not. We're not turning this X-rated. I mean, but at this point, you could <laughs> with pimento spread and and <laughs> pimento spread. Okay. And and um, wonton strips, salad toppers. Just sprinkle a few of them. They harmonize beautifully with the shell. It, it's, it is almost yin yang. You know, it balances at the, at the very beginning and the end and all around. All around. And of course, and, the, and we should have introduced this with the first meal, but I also wanted to before we get to it. Uh, oh, yeah, and wonton strips. And wonton strips. wonton strips <laughs> okay but we also wonton strips okay we also before we take that nibble i also want to show you guys what we're going to drink what we're going to have for our beverage our beaver age we are living in the beaver oops age in the beaver age this is what you drink with your supper evaporated milk liche evaporada take my word for it right there liche That would be another way to you know, opening a can up. I, I'm not going to do it tonight, but I, will, I promise you I will do that at some point. Or I just let her drop and we'll get some kind of crazy visual from it. But for tonight, I just, for the sake of the, getting this episode in the can, in the can <laughs> out of the can, <laughs> this is our drink. It's actually not bad. It, it tastes like Ensure. Sure. <laughs> sure it does. <laughs> no, it really does. <laughs> It's actually not bad. Okay, so let's try this water chestnut taco with tomato paste and pimento spread and wonton strips.
<laughs> you made it, dude. Eat it. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> mm. All right. But that's the general idea. So, you guys vote. Um, but yeah, radish racing, potluck, and we'll see you next time for Lucky 13 of the Whiteboard Show. Okay, and just a reminder, everybody, to sense the sauerkraut. You want to see the sauerkraut. You get out of here, you bamboo shoot. You get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Condensed milk. <laughs> Condensed. Oh my god. Dessert. <laughs> Dessert. Dessert. Oh my god. Dessert. 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 Okay, one last recipe, guys. Sauerkraut with condensed milk glaze. Just glaze. That little. Look at that glaze. Guys, look at that glaze. Look at that glaze. What can you tell us? Glaze. All right, so just a reminder. Really see, see the sauerkraut, guys. See, the sauerkraut, the life, come on. See the bright side, see the sauerkraut. <laughs> you know, wait a minute, it'd be the opposite. No, 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 that's the point, the opposite, all right? What you don't expect is a condensed milk sauerkraut dessert. <laughs> Main dish, maybe, not a dessert. Is the sour off pudding? Is it, or is it in pudding? That's, that's what this is. This is the sauerkraut condensed milk pudding. You want to see it? You want to listen to it? Listen for that. It's ready. I think it's ready. Feel it. Have it feel you. Um, smell it. It's like cabbage slaw. I mean, really, it's not that different, for real. See you next time.